Welcome everyone, Marcelo is my name. I am the niche fragrance collector. I'm doing the segment that I love, which is perfume FAQs. And this particular question has been playing on my mind for a while. Not long ago, we did a, a perfume meetup. There's a store here in Melbourne called Oligarch. It's a perfume boutique. Australians, if you're not aware of this boutique, you need to check it out. It is, if you love niche perfumery, this is the place to go to. Now, one thing that Kevin, the owner of the boutique, loves doing is perfume meetups in which we invite anybody from Melbourne or across Australia to come and join, bring their favorite fragrance to the boutique, and we all get a chance to discover something new. Now, one thing that occurred in one of these meetups was that there were three individuals of very dark skin complexion, and all three said the same thing, which was, my skin seems to be eating up my perfume. It left me super intrigued. I know that in film, cinematographers have to account for people with darker skin complexion. It's a whole different lighting rig for these individuals versus a person who has a very light skin. So I thought to myself, is this a thing also with perfumery that dark skin seems to absorb more the molecules in a perfume? This is consistent with a number of questions that I get asked on the channel, and that is, why does my skin seem to eat my perfume? Why does my skin deform the perfume? I can smell on card and what I smell on skin seem to be two different things. And then the last one, which is the holy grail when it comes to niche perfumery, and that is how can I achieve perfect perfume skin? This one here, I had no idea about until I started to come into the niche perfumery world. Early on, I was able to film with who I consider as the perfume goddess, Laura. We were doing a shoot together and I was testing different fragrances and upon applying one of the perfumes, she said to me, wow, I can really smell that. It, it really bloomed on your skin beautifully. I tried a different perfume and the same thing happened. And she's like, all of a sudden she looks at me and says, you've got perfect perfume skin. Now, at the time, I didn't know what this meant, not realizing that she had crowned me with the holy grail when it comes to all things niche perfumery. Since then, I mean like, well, what can I do? I've got perfect perfume skin. You know, this fragrance radiates on me. It's because I have perfect perfume skin. In preparation for today, I've actually discovered that there seems to be a myth surrounding this. I can't seem to find any conclusive scientific information, data, research, that says some kind of skin chemistry actually exists when it comes to perfume and its reaction to it. There's an author by the name of Luca Turin. He co-authored a book called Perfume, the A to Z Guide. And in actual fact, and I'm paraphrasing, he says that the whole skin chemistry is BS. He actually calls people who believe in this as ignorant. In actual fact, he attributes it to olfaction interpretation. We all have olfactory memory. When we smell a fragrance, we go, ah, it's this, whereas someone else smelling the same thing goes, ah, it's that. But here's the important part. What do you think? Right now, I know you're formulating some kind of response to this information. And what I'd love you to do is hold on to that thought, because at the end of this video, I would love to hear your comments on this particular subject. I'm gonna tell you my vote now, and that is, I believe that skin chemistry does exist. I also believe in olfactory interpretation, and I'll come back to that. But first, let's agree on facts, and let's begin this journey on the same platform, and that is our skin is the canvas for where the perfume will be interacting. Some people like to spray on clothes, but as a majority, we do enjoy spraying on our skin. Now our skin, well, there's an invisible eye form. There are trillions of microorganisms, bacteria, fungi, viruses, all living, which when I did the research, it sounds pretty wild. Now, that layer is actually called the skin microbiome. A healthy skin microbiome, in actual fact, is measured on a pH level. And we wanna be between five to seven in acidic. One from a health point of view, so it can actually combat germs that may um, you know, land on our skin. And secondly, it seems as if slightly acidic our skin is, the better the fragrance performs. That's number one. Number two, that our skin does emanate some kind of scent. We all have our own unique DNA signature. We all have a unique fingerprint. I'd like to tell you that you have your own unique scent. I love in the movie American Beauty, where Annette Bening's character, after she finds out that Kevin Spacey is, is dead, goes into the cupboard and opens it up and you see her rummaging and all of a sudden she pauses. Anything to do with smelling, I join gaps. 
she pauses. Why? I'm going to say she smelt the clothing because then she grabs his clothes as in just to feel him, but he doesn't exist in the clothes, but his scent profile does. I also love doing this and I encourage you to do it too. Smell your loved one in this particular area here. I find that this is where the soul exists of that person in particular in the morning. Smell that. And I know that some people are like, what are you doing? Why? My wife initially, when we first got married, she's like, why do you constantly smell me in my necker? It's because that's the divine part of her. This is where I'm smelling her essence essentially. So what else affects our skin? Well, our diet. Things like if we're eating an excessive amount of garlic, it's actually going to come off on your skin. If you love a diet of uh, strong spices, cumin, cardamom. I know there are some cultures that love these kind of spices in their food. You can smell it on their skin. Another one is alcohol. Your liver can only process so much depending on how much alcohol you're drinking. The rest is coming off on your skin and that is also creating a scent profile to you. So it's fair to say that when you spray your perfume, if you've been eating a lot of garlic, a lot of cumin, drinking a lot of alcohol, that fragrance is going to perform in a different way on you. I had an opportunity to meet Pierre Guillaume in Clermont Ferrand, where, he's, where his laboratory is. Have a look at this episode if you want to see more of this. Now, one of the things that he mentioned to me, which I absolutely loved, is that our skin is the canvas upon which he creates his perfumes. People is the second part of the product, you know, and something that interacts with the, the, the chemical compound. Body chemistry are always the um, catalyzer yes. of my work. The objective for me is that the combination of Tonka Bodicon plus Marcello, it's something unique. When I was in the Pierre Guillaume boutique, I tested a new fragrance that he had just released called Le Air et Le Eros. It didn't do a lot for me. It was a beautiful fragrance, smelled great, but I didn't feel like it was actually pushing off my skin. After we finished filming, we went into the Clermont Ferrand city, we walked around, and I could detect this beautiful fragrance in the air. I said to Pierre, I don't know who's wearing perfume, but this smells amazing. He says to me, that's Le Air et Le Eros. And I'm like, I remember at the time I'm like, mm, okay, because when I tested it, it wasn't really pushing. His comment was, I made this fragrance specifically for his business partner, Mike. He mentioned that he understood the skin profile, the actual skin chemistry of Mike, the actual atmosphere and the way it reacts. It was a beautiful spring day. And he said that fragrance on him pops. And it was true. The perfume plus Mike became something spectacular. Here's another example. There's an incredible brand called 2787 in, based in Barcelona. And the perfumer there, or the creator of this, created a molecular fragrance. When I first discovered this, I thought, no, can't be, not possible. I tested five people. Each one of us had a unique scent profile. You may say it was Inception or it's just really clever marketing. And maybe you're right, you're, maybe you're right. But I would recommend go and test for yourself. I find that genetic bliss does blend in with you. The idea behind it is that it actually works on your skin chemistry, on the molecular components of this fragrance and develops something that is uniquely you. The structure of the fragrance is woody, musky. That's where it, it lives. So it's not all of a sudden gonna become an extreme gourmand or an extreme incense fragrance. However, you will detect a difference between different people as this fragrance begins to play on your skin. And I tested again prior to doing this episode. On my son's skin, it has a dry musk smell, almost ambrette-like. On me, I get a sweet woods, almost to the point that it is a touch of I don't know whether it's caramel or brown sugar, but there is a sweetness that's actually in the fragrance. Genetic Bliss, test it out for yourself. You tell me what you think of that fragrance. Here's another example of where the skin chemistry does take place. Beautiful fragrance here by Zurichoff called 40 Nights. I love doing these segments in which we exploring fragrances that make you wanna say, mm, baby, what is your name? So if you're walking down a street and you smell something, you're like, my gosh, who is wearing that? I did this episode with my two editors. They both sprayed at the same time 40 knots. One of my editors, Hannah, the fragrance has a more spicier note profile to it. Whereas on Grace, there was a sweetness. It was wild to spray the same fragrance in the same moment and yet two different scent profiles existed. So if we can agree that our skin 
is the perfect canvas for our fragrance, then the question is, how do we develop perfect perfume skin? The reality is this, healthy skin. That's all we're actually after. By having healthy skin, our fragrance will actually perform better. Some things that I found through my research, one, a healthy diet. By having a healthy diet is a great way to start that process, to try to minimize alcohol. Alcohol does seep onto our skin. Try to minimize smoking. Smoking actually affects our gut flora, which in turn affects the skin microbiome. Another way that we can protect our skin microbiome is by not using harsh cleaning agents, so harsh soaps when we're showering. Came across this article by Mark Benk, and he mentioned that when do we normally apply perfume? Straight after a shower. And then we ask ourselves, why is my skin eating the perfume? The effect this has is that the large molecules used in a perfume are closer to the oils that you just removed. What happens? Those oils go deep into the hair follicles where the sebaceous glands which produce the body oils are located. This is what people who say their skin eats perfume are describing. The moment you step out of the shower, your body is now trying to bring back those oils that it needs to have that perfect pH balance. Pores are opened, you spray your perfume, those larger molecules are literally swallowed up by your body. So Mark recommends the following. Apply a petroleum jelly to moisturize in the areas that you like to spray. In my case, and just so you know, I don't do this for myself because remember, I do have a crown that says that I have perfect perfume skin. But if you're having difficulties, this is what you would do. Apply it on the areas that you like to put perfume. For me, it would be my stomach, my solar plex, and my arm. So you just apply on those particular areas, prime the skin, spray perfume, and you'll find that you're gonna get a lot more longevity out of your fragrance in the long term. Let me come back to Luca Turin's comment and his dismissal of skin chemistry in any way and attributing it all just to olfactory interpretation. This does affect the way that we understand a perfume. And I wanna give you the example of this glorious fragrance here called Uden Overdose. I am forever talking about the glory of this perfume. If you haven't experienced it, I'd recommend it to you. This is a divine citrus, vanilla, amber. It's enveloping, it is enticing, it has incredible longevity, it has incredible throw and sillage. There is presence with this fragrance. However, and I've read this in a few different locations, some people dislike this fragrance because it reminds them of a toilet cleaner. I remember when I first read this, I'm like, that is one fancy toilet cleaner that you guys are using. I don't get any, yes, there is a citrus, but I don't get this toilet cleaner component of it. Turns out that this aroma chemical or this particular scent profile in some parts of the world is used in a toilet cleaner. And so unfortunately, the olfactory interpretation for these poor individuals who are missing out on this glorious fragrance is that it reminds them of their mother's toilet cleaner or the toilet cleaner that they are using. Another one, now this creates a polarizing effect. Have a look at the episode I created on Sadonaso. In the episode I mentioned that I went to a function and I wore this purposely to see what kind of response I would get. It was not the appropriate function to be wearing a fragrance like Sadonaso, which is all about uh, well, it's about sex, essentially. Some of the responses I got from people were this divine, pleasing vanilla cookie dough component. And, it, and believe it or not, I actually got that from a lot of the women. They were going, wow, your perfume is divine. In the same event that I went to, the men that I came across said that I smelt vile. Some of them recoiled backwards and going, what in the world are you wearing? Read the comments in that particular episode and you'll see that some people do smell that vanilla cookie dough component, whereas others are smelling a cat pee component. It's wild. So here is one fragrance with two olfactory interpretations. Experiences in our lives, memories that we've created as a result of a particular smell will make us go either divine or repulsive. But what about skin chemistry? What are your thoughts? I would love to hear what you have to say on this. As I said, my vote is skin chemistry is a real thing and a perfume performs differently on different people. Hope you enjoyed that. If you've got any further questions for me, make sure you put them in the comments. I love doing this sort of thing. 
I look forward to the next perfume FAQ. See you guys all on the next episode.